Chapter 35 The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an, as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And on high, and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with songs of and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. For the ten verses that are in here, this is, this is an amazing chapter. Um, we see in the first seven or eight verses... A powerful, magnificent restoration of the land of Israel, having waters and and being fertile and all everything working out so that it is a glorious place to live. Which is what the Lord was trying to tell Israel. If they were righteous, He would bless it, modify the weather, so there would be lots of rain. There would be if land would be fertile. It would yield its strength. All the rest of it, and they just wouldn't. They just wouldn't. But he, because they're going to turn their hearts to him in the, when they, before they return, or as they return, he is going to prepare this ground for them so that it is going to be an absolutely marvelous place to live. Now, it's going to be at least the ten tribes that come back at, at, as a result of the fulfillment of this prophecy, and maybe all twelve. But I, we think... Now, as of the highway from the north, it says only the righteous shall travel on the highway, uh, which, or instead of just the highway, it's called the way of righteousness, the way of holiness. Ephraim, through whom the blessings of the ten tribes of all of, all of Israel, as a matter of fact, were to come, will probably be gathered first. Those of the tribe of Israel, of Ephraim. And then... Uh, the rest of the ten tribes, and Judah, and the Levites, somewhere. And they will come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy on their heads. And it will be a time of great celebration and great blessings. And this is one of the things that Isaiah saw and was absolutely thrilled to see. I mean, Isaiah was a prophet to at least four kings over some of the most trying times ever in the history of Israel and Judah. This guy had it tough. And there were challenges with kings and invasions and wars and all kinds of things. And for him to have the blessing of being able to see the restoration of the ten tribes and the restoration of the land of Israel to the way that it could have been was a real blessing. Now we've got another 31 chapters to go.